worry about evildoers. Don't worry about folks who are trying to set you up. Because what they intend for evil, God will turn around and use it for good to move you ahead and promote you in life. So who can be against you if God is for you? Give somebody a high five and say, do you know you are a majority of one? Numbers don't mind when you are on the Lord's side. Numbers don't matter when you got somebody else on. When you are a majority of one because if you are in God, and God is in you. It does not matter how many demons in hell are coming up against you because God has all in his hand. Can we give my loving preaching husband a hand? Hallelujah. <laughs> Giving honor to God, to Jesus, our big brother, and to the Holy Spirit, our cousin. It's so good to see all of you today. And it's just a blessed day. The sun is shining. God is smiling on us. And when God smiles, it's a mighty good thing, y'all. Mighty good thing. I'm thankful today for all my beautiful children. Y'all stand. All my grandbabies, come on, y'all, stand. John and Ron, stand. That's my boys. That's my new boys. I love y'all. To my, oh, wait a minute. My nieces, my sister-in-laws, my nephews, my extended family, y'all, please stand. <laughs> Amen. Papa Bird, I ain't forget you, brother. To our clergy, Metro clergy, please stand. Thank you all so, so much. And I have a big surprise on Friday night. My oldest brother surprised me, Mr. Holland Mouton all the way from Houston, Texas. This is my big brother. <laughs> and my lovely niece, his daughter, my Meta. This was the first baby I touched and held. My first baby. What a God. They surprised me and then they gonna tell me don't have a heart attack. All right, y'all. <laughs> yep. My, my dancers. <laughs> and I can't forget my choir. <laughs> and Metro. Y'all give yourselves a hand. Okay, our... our God is so good. He, he blessed us with this Bible. And some call it the good book. It's better than good, y'all. It's better than good. When you take your time and go into it, it's a powerful book. So let us pray. Daddy, we gather today because you said so. And we thank you so much for being here with us. I thank you for our balcony that is looking over God. My mom, my dad, my grandmothers, my grandfather. My mother-in-law, my father-in-law. My brothers, my uncles and my aunts. God, we just thank you that they're cheering today. And we're just so grateful, God, that they were our legacy, part of the life that treasured this moment. We give you all the glory. And we ask, Lord God, that you touch a heart today. Open a mind and speak to a spirit. And help us to see that you are better than ever. You're awesome. And we sit at your feet right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Uh, the Bible is full of stories, and um, I just love stories. And I have a niece, Deb. She reads books, and she's always saying, I mean, it was good. And I was like, girl, I can't read that fiction. <laughs> but in our Bible, God is speaking to us, and we're going to read from Luke, the seventh chapter, 36 through 50. It seems like a lot, but it's a story. So the title of my message today is Untitled, and my subtitle is He Knows My Name. Yeah. He Knows My Name. Yeah. So as we look at the pages here at this beautiful story, Luke 7 and 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. I'm reading from the King James, everyone. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. And stood at his feet behind him, weeping and beginning to wash his feet with tears. And did weep them, wipe them with her hair of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had hidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightfully judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she had washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou givest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came in, had not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou dost not anoint. But this woman had anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sit at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sin also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. That's our story. Mm -hmm. So in our story today, we uh, find that the story was written in Matthew through John. But Luke's version of this story is different from other parallels in both context and substance. Within this story, we are discussing three characters, Jesus, our Savior, Simon, the self-righteous Pharisee, and a sinning woman that was an outcast with no name. This is the reason for my title, Untitled. 
but he knows my name. So, Jesus accepted an invitation to a party. And um, this party was in a home, home of a Pharisee named Simon, a self-righteous man. See, the Pharisees were the law keepers and the ones who set the standards. Whose name, his name was Simon, but he was the host of the party. This was a dinner party. So in those days, parties were sometimes held on the outside. Often open to most people. People were welcomed and invited to experience customary hospitality. With my hospitality in the house. Woo -woo. Good manners were demanded and performed upon arrival by the host. The houses of well-to-do people in the ancient New East were built around central courtyards in which formal meals were served. The host and his guests reclined on low-lying couches that were arranged around the outside of the table and facing away from the table. They did not have four-legged chairs, okay? They would lie on their left side and eat with their right hand. Their feet would extend away from the table in keeping with the belief that their feet were unclean due to the feet being away and only covered under the bottom because of them traveling through the, dust, the dusty streets. So this was a house party. Do I have some party people in the house today? Lula! <laughs> well, you know, a party can be of various kinds. You have the birthday party, the business party, the sip sip parties. I know about it. <laughs> Sick party. <laughs> right, John? Party. So, so I, I, my grandkids would text me and call me, and I was like, where you at? Grandma, we going to a party. I said, okay, have fun, but two things you got to remember. Watch your exit and watch your glass. Always. Because my big brother almost died at a party. So I have one grandson. Joshua, stand up, please. Joshua doesn't even have to crash a party. He's the guy that everyone invites. And I turned to his mom, I said, where's Josh going? To a party. <laughs> his classmates get upset if he doesn't show up. That's a party dude right there. <laughs> so the Bible said that Jesus attended parties. Many times he was partying with sinners. And in verse 37, we see that there was a woman of the city with a pass. She learned that Jesus would be in the Pharisee's house. So she found her way to the party and brought with her an alabaster box filled with costly perfume and standing behind him. Behind Jesus' feet, she started weeping and began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them. Turn to your neighbor and say, do you know a sinner? Now hug yourself and say, I know a sinner. So let's notice this. Notice these three things about this woman. She, Kim, she was a sinner. She was a sinner. And she knew her past very well. She does not speak at all in this text. She's quiet. First of all, she wasn't invited to this party. 
Ron, she crashed the party. <laughs> she crashed that party. And have you ever had an opportunity to crash the party? Let me see some hands. <laughs> That's my party people. But she had a plan and a focus and strong faith. So for this reason, she arrived early to the party to complete her task. She was not tardy for the party, right? <laughs> Don't be tardy. <laughs> she didn't have to be seen walking down and walking all late, right, G-Money? Because G-Money will stop you. Walking all late, making noise, commo commotions. So as she moved in her silence, speechless and untitled, she had come in faith with a mission to show love and service to Jesus. She was labeled as a wicked and moral woman because of her past. She went in to serve. One thing for sure, she was a woman with a story. That's history, right? She had a story. Her mind was made up and she was moving in her decision. So from the time that she had entered the party, she was seriously serving. As we know, good service comes with a cost. And to follow God, you must sacrifice what you love the most. As you serve your sins and imperfections, they will move you to the right place. I started to wonder about this woman. Maybe her mother was a single parent, or perhaps she had missed out on the experience of a loving father. Or was it because of her beauty that she had chosen this lifestyle? Anyway, she was done. She was done being used by men. And she was done caring what people thought. She had been broken. And finally, she had found out about a man that would take her and not take advantage of her mind, her body, and even her lifestyle. Somewhere, somehow, possibly through a public sermon, or maybe through a private, unrecorded conversation. Jesus' word had gone to her heart. So she went to the party to receive an anointing. And in return, Jesus, with tears in anticipation of his own death, received an anointing from, from her, from her. Now this was a sinner, a sinner woman. In his presence, she proceeded to weep, like pouring rain onto Jesus' feet, his dusty feet. And as she began to kiss his feet, having no towel, she wiped his feet with her long, you know, my hair used to be down here, long hair, <laughs> long hair, and anointed them with the costly oil, the perfume that filled that room from her alabaster jar. Jesus anointed her. He saw her heart and not her past. God will forgive you of your past. She had gone down low because she was looking for real forgiveness. She could have anointed his head, but she needed to not only weep, she wanted to pour out the most expensive thing that she owned. Yes, she wanted to serve Jesus. So Luke noted in verse 39 that when the Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw what the woman had done, he said to himself, 
This means that you're talking to yourself. Have you ever talked to yourself? He said, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this was. Who is touching him? She's a sinner. Won't we call out each other? We quick to call somebody else a sinner. I told you to hug yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here we see Simon, and Simon is criticizing her because he's at a loss. He's done nothing right. He was the host that failed to be a true hostess. So perhaps her beauty caught him off guard. And he had totally forgotten as the host that he was supposed to serve the invited guests. He was acting just like the righteous who always can see the sins of others, but not their own. So he tries to distract her with his sarcasm, but she never said a mumbling word. And you know a sister can pile it up if you hit them the wrong way. Remember now, the devil's job is to use tricks to distract us. She did not give in. She stayed focused. So why, Lou, was Jesus invited to this party? Was this challenging? And were they trying to see who this man was? They needed to know who his identity was. You know how they back, background check, DJ. Background check. <laughs> Were they looking to investigate who this Jesus, the lover of sinners, was? Could he truly be the prophet? Simon, alone with his Pharisees, did not recognize or know this prophet of power. And it is only in Luke that Jesus refers to himself as a prophet. In chapter 5, it says they hated him. Because he preached the message against self-righteousness. You don't know who's going to be at the party. Sometimes they're hating you. People don't mind when you preach good news. That tickles their ears. But don't come at them with life-changing convictions. Because when you turn around, they will turn away from you. Yet this is the word of God. So, Jesus the prophet, God's only son, knowing Simon's thoughts, began to speak. And he responds to Simon's complaint with a parable. An earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So he shares the story of two debtors. One who had been forgiven a small do dollar, like 50, that was his debt. And the other, a much larger debt of $500. Think about it. It's like uh, this phone, you know, your phone rings. Someone in the house look at it. And you have these call IDs on the little thing and say, it's the bank. <laughs> you say, don't answer that. But they keep calling back. They keep calling. They keep calling, finally one day you say, oh, let me answer this phone. The voice begins to ask you for your mortgage payment. And you say, I'm sorry, I can't pay it right now. Can I call you back? Y'all know how we do, we want to say click. Can I call you back later? They reply, and, and, and the people say, no worries. We just call to let you know that you are forgiven for this debt. It is paid in full. Yes. Your mortgage is paid in full, and your debt is free. You would lose your mind. You would be just shouting all over that house, and you couldn't wait. You'll bust the doors open on the church because you got to come praise God. Ain't that right? But this is what Jesus was doing when he was teaching this parable, a lesson as an example to say all are forgiven, no matter how much they have sinned. Forgiveness of God means he has incurred the debt 
And Jesus died to pay it. The debt doesn't go away. It still must be paid. But the forgiver takes it and pays it off. It was transferred to the forgiver. So Jesus intended to compare this story with the woman to the debtor who was forgiven more and then to show that her sins were forgiven. That's verse 40 through 41. He knows our minds even before we open our mouth. And because he knows our minds, Sometimes he must demonstrate what he means. I started to wonder why Jesus just didn't fix it. Especially since he knows what we're thinking. Because he knows that sometimes we can't get it with just words. So Jesus said, come here, DJ. This is Jesus. Come on, Pharisee. Come on. Keep the purple. You stay right in the middle. Okay. Right there. Turn right forward. Turn to Come on, sinning woman. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. So Jesus turns to the woman. It's like doing this. And he tells her something about Simon because he don't understand by words. He, she, he got to demonstrate. Let me show you, Simon, mm. how it's done. So Jesus will demonstrate with us. He doesn't really need us to hear it through words. Ah. He will show us. Because too many of us can't hear it with words. Thank y'all. <laughs> so the untitled sinner had turned to Jesus and found forgiveness. She received more forgiveness for her sin. Because she loved more and demonstrated that Jesus' forgiveness had awakened in her heart the desire to serve him more sacrificially. Jesus' prophetic mission was to impart faith and to forgive sin. Yet, it puzzled me that in our society, there are many people who feel like they have no sin. They haven't sinned. You know, you sinning because you over there on the street. You sinning because you pouring that drink down your throat. But what about you lying about don't answer that phone? <laughs> That's a sin. So I've come today to tell you don't miss your blessings by acting like the Pharisee. Stop criticizing and judging others. See, the Bible tells us that everyone born of Adam is a sinner. And the, we are sinners by birth. But God is still in the forgiving business, and it is God who gives the anointing, not man. Pastor stated this morning, we ain't the only ones got the anointing. You got the anointing, too. So now you're going to turn to your neighbors and say, God gives the anointing. So before we go on any further, don't think that the woman was the only sinner in the Bible because men were sinners too. Remember David? And Bathsheba? So the act of living a righteous life will always be challenged by sins. Our choices will either make us or break us. Yet the fact is, we cannot trick God. He knows your name. He knows your thoughts. And he knows your heart. Finally, my brothers and sisters, we are often afraid to come to Christ when we have sinned. We withdraw from him. But this sinful, untitled woman shows us how it's done. God does not always call people to serve that are coming from a lifestyle 
of what we consider good. Point number one, God will take our negative past and bless us with a powerful future. Young man just got his. So sincere repentance doesn't care about public opinion. Don't let any barriers hold you back. Rush in and throw yourself at his feet in love and gratitude. Not fearing you are unworthy or worrying about others and what they think. Point number two, no matter how unworthy you may feel, God, grace, and mercy are freely given to hearts that are broken and humbled. Our God forgives, and he'll forget. Romans 3, 23 tells us, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you follow this example of this woman and discourage, discourage the power of throwing yourself at Jesus' feet, pouring out your pain, then you will find true love, mercy, and life abundantly. You will find it. So she left in peace, justified by grace, and filled with her faith in the power of Christ. But I got one more point. Point number three. Your faith will lead you to salvation. And if you serve God, you won't miss out on being saved. She was a living testimony told by Jesus to go in peace to man. She was untitled. But to God, who knew her name, she earned a new beginning. She earned a new beginning. She served him. And she was saved. Kim, grandma used to say, what can wash? Oh, oh, what can wash? I weigh my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, oh. Oh, but DJ, Andre Crouch brought it back. Andre Crouch said, oh my goodness. Andre Cross said, he came with it. Andre Cross came with it. He said, how did he say that thing? <laughs> oh, to, no, the one about the blood. Oh, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. But he had a little spin to that thing. He said, be happy. Don't worry. Because it's coming to you. But you got to believe in him. The man upstairs. Not these men not here. It doesn't matter that you sin. And then he said, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus was. Oh, when he was. When Jesus was. He washed my sins away. <laughs> oh, a happy day. He taught me how to watch, fight and pray, fight and pray, and, and then rejoice. shame <laughs> don't be ashamed you can wash his feet too come on pour it out you know I see women crying but men it's okay it's okay for you to cry too just wash his feet and when you've done your best call on his name and fall on your knees God bless you and get on your he knows your name hallelujah y'all put your hands together for the beautiful and wonderful Thank your you. prayers support and partnership 
make this ministry possible. The vision of Inspired Family Ministries is to continue to bring families together around the Word of God by sharing God's Word in new ways and in new places. That's why we believe that God, His Word, plus your family equals transformation in all of our lives and communities. To partner with Inspired Family Ministries, visit inspiredfamilyministries.org today.